Welcome to my review videos for the final examination, going through the problems on my review sheet. I trust that you have access to the problems on this sheet as you're watching these videos, because I'm not going to be writing down the full problem statements. I trust that you'll be following along. Uh, as always, you'll get most out of this review sheet if you try the problems by yourself before watching these videos. So if you have not yet done so, I encourage you to do that. But in any case, without further ado, let's start looking at the first problem. So the first problem asks us to find the length of the parametric curve. x of t is sine cubed of t, y of t is cosine cubed of t, whereas t runs between 0 to pi over 4. So for this one, we're going to use our arc length uh, formula here. And so everything up here... Uh, everything up here is, uh, is, is satisfying this problem. So what do we have to do? Take the derivative to x, take the derivative to y, square them and sum them, take the square root and integrate that from 0 to pi over 4. So let's start crunching out what's going on here. x prime of t. So let's point out this is really sine of t cubed. This is really cosine of t cubed. So by the chain rule, we end up with 3 times sine squared of t times, chain rule says, a factor of cosine t pops out. y prime of t, uh, by the chain rule, 3 comes down, times cosine squared t times, chain rule says, minus sine t pops out right there. We don't care about x prime and y prime by ourselves. We want to square them. So x prime of t squared. When we squared this, 3 squared gives us 9. Sine squared t gives us sine to the fourth t. Squaring cosine gives us cosine squared t. y prime of t squared. Squaring 3 gives us 9. Squaring cosine squared t gives us cosine to the fourth of t. Squaring sine of, sorry, squaring negative sine of t gives us a positive sine squared of t. And so when we add these two together, what do we end up with? Well, there's a common factor of 9. There's a common factor of sine squared of t between these. And there's a common factor of cosine squared t between these. Then what's left over, we have a factor of sine squared t here. We have a factor of cosine squared t over here. And this, of course, is just 1. So it's just 9 sine squared t cosine squared t. Okay, so uh, at this point then, we care about not the sum of the squares here, but the square root of that. So, square root, square root, square root. And so this is going to give square root of 9 is 3. Square root of sine squared t is just sine t. Square root of cosine squared t is just cosine t. Uh, we would uh, have to be a little bit careful about plus or minus, except, ah, I made a mistake way back at the start. When I copy that down, that's supposed to be t running from 0 to pi over 4 and not to 4. My apologies there. So why was I looking at this? When t is between 0 and pi over 4, both sine and cosine are going to be positive, so we don't have to worry about absolute values or negatives or anything like that when we're taking the square root here. Okay, so uh, to get our final answer, all we have to do is using this formula, this theorem right here, 0 to pi over 4, the integral of 3 sine t times cosine t dt. And when you crunch this out, uh, you can do this by substitution u is equal to, let's say, sine t, du is equal to cosine t dt. 
because there is the U. Uh, our bounds change when U, sorry, when T is 0, U is 0. When T is pi over 4, that's root 2 over 2. So 3 U DU. So here we have 3 halves U squared plug in 0 and root 2 over 2. And our final answer ends up as 3 fourths.